Well, this is Don with UBS Associates, and I want to thank all of you to attending today. What we're going to talk about is using templates in QuickBooks. And I can go through just about any customer that I meet and look through their stack of their vendor bills and say, oh, they're using QuickBooks, they're using QuickBooks, and I'm sure you can do the same thing. Because the QuickBooks template, when we do an invoice or an estimate or a purchase order or a sales order, looks pretty much the same. And most of us tend to use the, the template that they gave us. And I'm here to say you don't have to use that template. You can create your own and make it look the way you want to. So when you're using the templates, think about what you want. What does it want? Does it tell the customers about you? In a lot of instances, the form that you send them, the invoice, the estimate, the sales order, whatever you send them, is the only thing they may see of you. They may never meet you face to face. They may never come to your office. And so that document that you give them is your representation of your business and of you. And you want it to look professional. You want to have anything that you want on it. So you look at the forms and you say, that's not what I want. And QuickBooks gives you a whole bunch of different ones. And so you can try different forms. And as you do, they're going to change what's on there. But what we want to do is go up to list and down to templates. And here's all of the standard forms that QuickBooks gives us. And kind of start with the one that you want. And I'm just going to start with a custom invoice. And instead of editing the invoice they gave me, I'm always going to create a duplicate so that the original stays the way it is. I'm going to go in and play around with it and make it look different. So we're going to come down to the template button at the bottom, and we're going to duplicate it. And do I want to duplicate it as an invoice, a credit memo, a sales receipt? Well, we're going to start with an invoice. And so now it says copy of custom invoice. So we double click on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is manage the template. I don't like copy of custom invoice. That doesn't tell me anything. This might be my invoice, or this is the emailed invoice. If I print normally on um, multi-part forms, but sometimes people want me to email it, I might have a separate template that I use to email. Or if I have different invoices for different types of situations. So name it something that when you look at it, you know, aha. That's the invoice template that I should use. Then you're going to go in, and on the front part, we're going to use a logo. And I can come in here, and I'm not even sure if I have a logo on here. Um, any bitmap or GIF, GIF file, you can put on as your logo. And it will center it right here on the invoice, and then you can move it around any way you want to. I have several customers that have different company names all in one company, and we want different addresses, we want different company names, and so we do all that by building a logo for that information, put it on the template, and so this is my A company logo, this is my B company logo, and by simply changing the, the template when I'm doing the invoice will determine what company my customer sees. I can do the colors, so this uses a lot of ink. I prefer doing the black, but if you want to, and it changes the ink color. You can go in and change the font. Um, I typically change the font for my labels. QuickBooks uses a nine-point font. I'm getting older. I can almost read it. So I prefer at least an 11, maybe even a 12. Think about your invoices and your documents. How much text do you have in the body? So if it's a lot of text, you might want to go a little bit smaller. If it's just one or two words, you might want to go a little bit bigger. And when I change my text, then I also want to change my data font to match. And it's telling me that not all the fonts are the same, um, and so it's going to set up the ones that I've got. Keep in mind, if you add new fields after this, you may have to change the font individually for that new field. So I can go in on all of these and change the font. Down below, it says, well, do you want to print your company name? This is going to print the company name and address that is in the comp 
company information file in your QuickBooks setup. So again, if you have a different address you want to use, I have a, a consultant, he has an office in Seattle, one in Portland, and one in Chicago. And when he invoices people from each city, he wants it to have that office's number. But he keeps track of it all in one file. So that's where we use the logo so that each office, each address is different, and we take these two off. Do you want to show your phone number, your email, your web? your facts. Notice that when I put this information in, it's putting it all down here. And I see people send out invoices with this information down here, and it's perfectly fine. I personally don't like it, and I'm going to show you today how to move it around. The print uh, paid status, if you're resending an invoice to somebody because they want to copy, and it has that paid stamp on it, do you want it to have that paid stamp on it or not? This is where you could go in and say, I don't want to put that on there. Here's where I can go in and change my company information, and this is the company information off the setup. Typically, only admin user can change this information. So now I've got the information that I want here, but I'm going to come in to additional customization. And I have different sections of the invoice. So we're going to start with the header. The header is all of this area up here. This is the default field. I want to see it on the screen. This is, I want it to print so that you'll see it. And this is the title that I want. So maybe I don't want it to say, um, invoice, I want it to say um, shipping invoice or acknowledgement or confirmation or whatever you want to call it. So you can change here what it prints. It's not going to change the default field. <clears throat> couple things I want to make you aware of. This other field, a lot of times I see people include that on to their forms and it works just fine and it prints just fine and I have this other field. The problem with it is I will never be able to search for that field. I will never be able to run a report and show the information on that field. So yes, I can put a field in there and I can call it ship method and then I can type in an answer on my screen and you'll see it when it prints, but we'll never find it anywhere on another report. So use the other um, very sparingly. We'll come back to this, but these down here are custom fields. We have gone into the customer, and we've added additional fields to the customer under additional information. And so any field that I add in the customer setup, I can now include those fields on my template. So I've got a contract, a birthday, a spouse's name. I can see it on the screen. <clears throat> Sometimes I want to see it on the screen. I don't necessarily want you to see it. Other times I want you to see it, but I'm not going to see it on the screen. For example, the project job. If you use jobs in your customer list, when you open up the invoice, you select the customer job up in the top left of the invoice. You don't see the job anywhere on the screen. But when the customer gets the invoice, they will have it printed right here in the project field. So again, how do I want these? And I'll show you in a minute how to move them around. The columns, now we're into the body of the invoice. So again, here are the fields. I want to see it on the screen. I want you to see it when it prints. Oh, and this is the order that I want. A lot of people want the item first, then the description, and then the quantity. So I might change it and say, I want the description to be second, and it automatically moves the quantity over. So I can pick and choose what I want. These other fields here, a lot of people will put on there that I want to track the color, or I want to track the size, and it will create a column here on the invoice, and like the others on the header, I will be able to put it on the invoice, I will be able to print it on the invoice, but I will never be able to print it on a report or to be able to filter for it. So just like with my customers, I have custom fields, I have custom fields in my items, and I would create my own custom fields for what I wanted, and then I could include these columns on my invoice, and it automatically puts them in 
to this order, which I'd probably want to rearrange them. So if it's a field of information that I want to be able to track, I want to run reports, make sure and create the field in either your customers or your items so that you can add them to your templates. Progressive columns is kind of like the other columns. So we have estimates. So those of you that are using estimates and invoices, and maybe on the invoice you want to show the estimated quantity, and you want it to print. Um, you want the rate, the amount, the prior quantity, the percentages. So again, be careful. If you mark too many of these columns, you're going to have a template that just has all these little columns across it, and nobody can figure out what anything is. Also, be aware of how much, how many columns you're putting on, how wide your label is. So you want to keep those nice and, and short. The bottom half is the sales orders. If you're on Premier or Enterprise, you have the option of having sales orders. And so again, what was the quantity ordered? What have we previously invoiced? Is there a back order? Do I want to show the sales order number? The sales order number is the only one here that is going to print up here on the header part. The rest of these are going to be on the item section. On the footer, the customer message is that optional message at the bottom of your invoice where thank you for your business and you can click on the drop down and choose which, which method message you put on there each time. So that's what this one is. This one down here is I have a lot to say and I want to put in, you know, my terms are, your invoice is due, you know, whatever it is, you're going to type your message in here. This message is going to appear on every transaction that you do. So the top one is picked from a drop down list on each individual invoice. The bottom text is going to automatically print on every invoice. Again, sales orders, sales tax, or subtotal sales orders, sales tax. Do you want to show prior payments? Do you want to show both the balance due, so it's an invoice, there's been a partial payment, you want to show the balance remaining. You can also include the entire customer's receivable balance. So depending on your situation, you can make this have whatever you want on it. And then the print, if you're on a network and you have multiple printers, maybe I want the packing slips to print out in the warehouse where they're going to be boxing the goods up. I want the invoice to print on this colored machine, and I want a file copy to print somewhere else. So for each template, you can tell it where you want it to go. Um, you can also have page numbers if you have more than one page. I uh, forgot this one down here, this payment network. This is one that's driving a lot of people crazy in 2011 because it puts a little link on the invoices that says, hey, you can pay this online, except if you're not set up to accept payments online, it takes them nowhere, and so you get a lot of questions. So if you're not using Intuit's merchant services and allowing people to pay their invoices online, I would take this little message off. So we've gone in and picked what columns we want, what fields we want. Now we're going to go into the layout designer. And if any of you have ever used a Microsoft Publisher, a graphic program, anything like that, this has pretty much all of the same tools. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start up here with my company name. And I want it to be a little bit fancier than just straight type. And so if you want to change the font for a single field, double click on it, and here's my font. And I can go in and I'm going to say, I think I like that font better, and I want it bold italics, and I want it in an 18-inch font. And I'm going to make it blue. So I have now changed it. Notice that I lost part of the company. So I've got to stretch it out. So these little black marks around here, you'll notice when I put my mouse on it, it changes to a two-sided arrow. So that's resizing it. If I put my mouse in the middle, now I have a four-sided arrow. Now I'm moving it. Sometimes people want to move entire blocks. I want all this invoice stuff down a little bit lower. 
So if I put my mouse just outside the box that I want and drag, you can see how it's expanding over all of it. And now those all move together as a box instead of having to move one field at a time. If I want my company name centered, the best thing I've found for centering is to drag this all the way across and then double click on it and tell it I want it centered. So now my company name is centered in my invoice. And that's going to depend a lot on if you're using a logo and where your logo is. And so I can move things around any way I want to. Remember when we said we want the phone number and the email and it's all down here? So again, I'm going to click on the outside, drag it over, and then I'm going to move all of these up here where I can kind of see them. And now I can click somewhere else so they're not selected, and I'm just going to grab my phone number and move it up here. And then maybe I'll grab the um, fax number, but I need the word fax so that they know, but I don't need it that big. And then I'm going to move my email down here. I don't think I need it to say email. I think people pretty well know that. So I can click on this. I don't need that header. And I'm just hitting the delete key on my keyboard, and it makes that field go away. And then maybe my, my website I'll put down here. So... That looks pretty good, except that I've got these funky little boxes around this, and that's really going to look kind of tacky when I print it out. So I can double-click on them, and I have borders, and I can take the borders off. And so I'm going to do that for each of these fields. And I want you to know I am not making a real pretty invoice today, so... Hopefully you'll get the idea of what you can do and not copy it. I also think here that this should be lined up with my address. So again, double-clicking on it until it left. And now my phone number is lined up with the address. Uh, better get rid of that box too. If I wanted to make something bigger, um, I simply double click on it and I go into the fonts and I can change the font. And so I can move fields around. I can make sure that they're the order. Let's say that I want the project over here on the left. So now I want to just move these two fields, not all of them. Well, if I can't really get in here because I'm grabbing the wrong field. So now I'm going to hold the shift key. Now I can't even put it back. I'm going to hold the shift key and click on just the two fields that I want, three fields that I want, okay. And now I can move them over here, because I really want them on the left. Now I want to maybe just expand this, okay. The other thing down here in the bottom, I can't do a whole lot of moving around, but with the quantity, I personally don't like the number one right next to the line. And so I'm going to double click on it and center it. And so now it centers the quantity down this whole line. I can go in and you've seen invoices where it looks like it's um, kind of faded. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in a background and I'm going to do a fill, and I can pick any color that I want. And so now my titles are going to be filled. And so I can do that all the way across. So now it looks like I've really got an expensive invoice, and it's starting to look a little less and less like a QuickBooks invoice. The other thing that I can do is, and I get this a lot from people, I really wish I could have the customer's invoice or the customer's fax number right here on the invoice because I need to be able to call them. And I, it wasn't one of those columns, and let's go verify that, but over here on the header, customer phone number, customer email, none of that information is on here. So I guess I can add it. Well, we'd be wrong. Because up here I have an add. I can add two kinds of fields. So we're going to stop, start with the data field. 
Every field that is out there for any of my customers is on here. So I want to be careful. I do this all the time. I hit the alternate phone number. I want the customer phone number. And it now brings this box, and here's my customer phone number. So when I print this invoice, no matter who the customer is, it's automatically going to put their phone number. And then I'm going to click apart, and I think we'll just put it over here. So now I have their phone number, or maybe I want their fax number, maybe I want the rep, um, any of those fields. Now, some of you, I've gone in, and I have a message that my big message down here, that long text, that's the message down here. This is the drop-down message, but I might have a totally different message that I want, and I've even seen it printed here in the middle. I've seen it printed up here. Um, I've made some forms for some state agencies where we have had a lot of different messages that we needed to put in. So then I would add a text box. And I can put in here anything that I want to appear. Maybe we'll put this in a big border and we'll do um, rounded corners. We'll make it kind of pretty and we'll make it red. And so here is my box. I can now, I better make it bigger. So we'll go bold and we'll go 14. And if my circle's going to be red, I'm going to make my message red. So now I have this box that's going to print on my invoice. So again, it's going to print on every invoice when I use this template. So make sure that it's not a unique message for this customer for this invoice. This message is going to print on everybody's invoice. So I can go in and I can copy, I can remove, I can copy the whole format. Um, I, my eyes are getting bad, so I can zoom in, make sure those lines are lined up, and so I can make the little dots. It takes me, and I kind of think I know what I'm doing, usually at least three tries to go in, create the invoice, come back out, test it, print it, and a word of, to the wise, even though it looks really pretty on the screen, make sure and print it if you're going to be printing it out so that other people can see it. So make sure and print it for about a year. My line here on the right-hand side did print. looked great on screen when I looked at it, but when I printed it, the line was never there. So go in, add your logos, add columns, move them around, put your own personal stamp on the invoice. And then, because this is a lot of work, and it takes three or four attempts, so you're coming out here, you're looking at the invoice, you're going, that looks good. You finally get this one document to look the way you want. We can preview it, and then, of course, print it. So I finally have my invoice looking the way I want it to, but now I need an estimate, and I need a sales order, and I should have my purchase order kind of look the same thing. So once I get my one document done, I'm going to come in and duplicate it, and this time I'm going to say, well, I want it to be a credit memo. So now copy of my invoice, but I'm going to come up here and call it my credit memo. And then I want to show you something, because when I come into the additional customization, it says it's an invoice, even though it's a credit memo, even though when I'm doing the credit memo, it's going to be one of the ones that I select. When it prints, it's going to say invoice because I copied my invoice. So I have to remember to come in here and change what it's going to say on the document. And so a lot of times I'll see where people have a beautiful document and they're all invoices. In reality, one's an estimate, one's a credit memo. Okay, And so make sure that you do that. The custom fields that we were talking about in my customers, and you can just double click on any customer you want to, and I'm going to say 
talk about that in another session. Under additional information, right here is defined fields. You do have to be in single user mode to be able to create these. But I can come in here and I can create whatever field I want. So um, maybe I want to know who they were referred by. And I want it for customers, vendors, or employees. So now that I've added that field, and QuickBooks just added it to every customer that I have, so I can come down to even a job, and they have referred by. So now I can go into my templates and go into my invoice, and down here is my referred by. I can now have that field there. The other thing that QuickBooks will do is if I add it in on the invoice, it will automatically update it on the customer file. If I put that in on the customer file, it will automatically print it on my invoice. So I need to add it in the customer before I can add it to a template. In Enterprise, get back in here. So in Pro and Premier, I can add my fields, and I believe I can have seven of them. They're text fields. They're 40 characters long. In Enterprise, I can come in, and I have 15 of them, and I can actually tell it what type of a field it is, that it's a date field, it's a uh, numbered field, whatever. So that's one of the differences between the programs. For my items, I want to track the color. I want to track the size. Again, double-click on any item. And here's my custom fields. And I can define fields. And I just come to the first blank line. And I tell it what I want the field to be. That field is now set up for every one of my items. And I can go into any of my templates. And I can add that field to my templates. So once you get all your templates in, so you're going to have my credit memo, you're going to have my invoice, my packing list, my estimate, all of the forms. You still have all of these Intuit ones. And what happens when you go in to create an invoice or any template, they're all listed here. And QuickBooks, because again, because it's a really nice program, it's going to be sorting them in alphabetical order. So that means I have to scroll up and down the list to try and find the template that I want. And those of you that know me know that I'm pretty lazy, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm not an attorney. I don't need an attorney. I'm going to make it inactive. Once I make one template inactive, there's a little button down here that says Include Active. And then I can just go in and uncheck all these, or put a little check mark there by it, so that I don't have to see all these other templates. So now when I'm on my invoice, I see my invoice. And I don't have to sort through all of the Intuit defined invoices that we've got out there. We have a couple minutes left. Um, I'm looking to see if anybody has any questions. Um, I'll try unmuting you, but... You know, maybe there's a little place on the little side panel on your um, screens that says raise your hand. If anybody has a question, okay, Tracy. Hi, Tracy, can you hear me? Yeah, your hand was up. Okay. So if you have a question, either raise your hand by clicking on the little button. Um, Let's see, Sandra had a question. Okay. I forgot to get the poll done before we started. Bill's got his hand up. Hi, Bill. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. I will be sending out an email to all of you um, asking you for your input. Um, if you found this valuable today, were you able to learn anything? Hopefully you learned something new. Um, next week uh, we have, can't even remember what next week is, but we'll be sending you an email for that too. You can always go to our teachmequickbooks.com and look there and 
there's a list on the calendar of events for what the classes are. So I think believe next week is non-inventory or inventory. So that is the question. So I hope to see you all back next week and have a great rest of the day. And now you get to go finish your lunch. Talk to you later.